Why is Tosh.0 always on when I'm talking to you guys? Stupid Tosh, whatever. Okay, um, I have another um, installment of existentialism and finding out what, uh, or just finding existentialism here. Um, because we have a very, a Russian literature writer named uh, Fyodor Dostoyevsky. Um, he wrote good things like The Idiot, he wrote Crime, uh, Crime and Punishment, he wrote The Brothers Kamarzov, and a lot of those really um, big uh, literature pieces. But there's one thing here that really matters to existentialism because you know, when we have modern, you know, when you have more recent ex existentialist thinkers like when you have Jean Paul Sartre, you have Martin Heidegger, you have Kafka, you have, um, yes, De Beauvoir, you have Camus, you have all these people who, you know, have the modern idea of existentialism being, being, you know, the repudiation of a theory and a set of beliefs and of systematic beliefs, and you have the um, resentment of traditional philosophy and the belief that you're free and responsible and that and then just the overall not not wanting to belong to any philosophical movement or belief or the individuality that ex existentialists have but um, there's a, a, a huge awesome a huge piece that Dostoevsky wrote called notes from the underground or letters from the underworld they're both the same thing and they, f the first part of Notes from the Underground is where the foreshadowing of ex existentialism comes. Um, basically, that what this this is a novel. This is not a this is a fictional novel. Now, this is basically Dostoevsky writing a guy writing about a writing a guy who is talking in first person about himself. He's describing himself. And it's he has a lot of he has a certain of opinions. And these opinions should not be ascribed to Dostoevsky, you know, because we don't know what the, we don't know that. So just because the the underground man has these opinions doesn't mean Dostoevsky does. But one thing that's really big here is in part two of the first or, or in chapter two of the first part, you have where he divides things, where he divides the people of the world into, into two groups. He divides them into people who are conscious and educated and people who are not, who are less conscious and about half as conscious as this guy, the, the, the underground man, he is, he describes himself to be fully conscious and fully educated and who, who is like this, the more conscious, educated man. And he explains it well here. And um, what the big deal is is that he he claims consciousness to be a disease. See, I'll read to you. Though after all, everyone does do that. People do pride themselves on their diseases, and I do maybe more than anyone. We will not dispute it. My my contention was absurd, but yet I am firmly persuaded that a great deal of consciousness, every sort of consciousness in fact, is a disease I stick to that so he's saying that consciousness is a disease now, this might seem like this doesn't seem like anything that you know, consciousness does me, does, doesn't seem to me to so, so like something that's a disease but this foreshadows existentialism because consciousness is a disease because you are Constantly contemplating your actions, and you're you're evaluating everything. You're evaluating everything, and you're sitting there, and you're subjecting yourself to degradation because you're never going to act on anything. You're thinking about things constantly because you're smart, and you know you're trying to calculate pros and cons and the outcomes of possible actions and possible uh, beliefs and possible and you know doing whatever. And you're never what. Dostoevsky is really getting after is that you're never going to really act if you have that consciousness and that this is that this is a disease because you're going to be stuck in this state of never doing anything because you're so worried about the outcome and that you're you're 
you're, you're going to be stuck in that degraded state. Now, the people, the first people who are less educated and about half as conscious, have the ability to act, so they're more productive and they have a better life. Typically, um, they aren't going to be sit there, sitting there. They're, they're, they're not going to be sitting there, not doing anything, thinking about things, and they're they're going to they're going to understand something and they're they're going to act on it. Well, I mean, they, they they might not understand things as well as the educated, conscious person will, but they will understand it a little less. But this will allow them to have the ability to act on things rather than just sitting there in, in degraded comp contemplation. But um, what this does is that this foreshadows ex existentialism. That you know, Kierkegaard was the first one, and I'll, I'll talk about him later. But this is something that. Jean Paul Sartre had in his writing. Just a quick look into Sartre's belief in existentialism. He he thought that we are free and responsible, and that regardless of whatever ideas, what we must act. Now, this characteristic, well, you know, there's this is a recognizing that consciousness can be a bad thing. Consciousness leading to a having a body of beliefs and having uh, systematic beliefs and you know because a person who's conscious is sitting there going through everything and it has a system of beliefs and a body of beliefs and because of these beliefs and their consciousness itself they are they are not brought to do anything and here consciousness in the body of beliefs is um, doing that person wrong because Sartre said that people must act regardless of how conscious they are and whatever beliefs they are that, that they might have that the person must act no matter what and here this is a repudiation um, I'm using Kaufman's term Kaufman is a he's a editor and he writes stuff about existentialism and a bunch of other stuff and um, he's he's found everywhere. Like he he uh, edited together the Gay Science by Nietzsche, Nietzsche, and Kaufman said um, that the, repu the, the repudiation of any adequacy uh, or the, the adequacy of any body of beliefs whatsoever, and especially of a systems. This this having consciousness will lead to a, a body of beliefs or a system of beliefs. So here, that's doing the person wrong because they're not—they're sitting there and they're not going to be able to act. So this is the overshadowing. This, or this is the foreshadowing of existentialism. This is one. This is one part of the book that is really existentialist. Now, Dostoevsky was not an existentialist, an existentialist at all, but he was just. This is a. You know, people who had the modern idea of existentialism, people, and when I say modern, I don't mean philosophically modern, I mean like more recent. They look they look back at Nietzsche, they look, they, Nietzsche, they look back at Dostoevsky, they look, they look back at other people and they say, this is existentialism. So, um, so what do you guys think about this idea? Do you think that consciousness, consciousness leading to having a body of beliefs is a good thing or do you think it's harmful to us cuz i th but i mean what i think i think that consciousness is necessary so i disagree with dostoevsky and sartre well sartre isn't pushing forward that well, i mean he's mostly just saying that that we must act and that consciousness does lead to this degradation of not ever doing anything because we're sitting there contemplating everything. But my opinion, I would say, would have to be that consciousness is not a disease at all, and that it's something that we all must have. But we all, but we cannot just sit there and you know contemplate everything. I mean, it's just like we have to. I mean, just to just to relate this to ethical utilitarianism. I think that we have to have a mix between act and rule utilitarianism because we have to have some moral code to fall back on so we have to have some structure so that we can actually do something 
instead of being the total act utilitarian and actually calculating it all yourself because then you might be then if you have consciousness then you might be sitting here not just not doing anything because you're contemplating and you're so you know worried about the outcome of every possible action but so I think that consciousness is a disease as long it is it's not a disease as long as we actually you know do something with that with that consciousness and don't you know sit there freaking out about it so yeah tell, tell me tell me what you guys think this is this is one little bit more about existentialism so there there'll be more see you later